Greetings friends and family, this is uh, Mark Wright Fly joining in from 59th Street on the east side of Manhattan, New York City. Today we are at a different location. My apologies again, I was delayed because of trains in New York that seem to be randomly delayed for no reason sometimes. Sometimes there is uh, some construction, sometimes it's a signal problem. Sometimes they just feel like slowing down trains, you just never know. But in any case, here I am. I was going to start at Grand Central today, but I was not able to do that unfortunately. So here we are, but everything happens for a good reason, right? I've always wanted to show you this train uh, station. I did show it to you on, uh, on short videos a couple of times. But this is one of the nicest, cleanest stations that we have in the city. With the nice art, mosaic art, left and right. And of course, you know, it helps that, uh, you know, it is located in one of the nicest uh, neighborhoods in the city. In any case, let me see who has joined so far. I just got off the Q train. See we joined it. Greetings you uh, Robin Lyles, I see you. Greetings you Robin, I see Godfather, I see Arjan Anwania. Greetings Judith Hinton, I see Shelly and Anthony as well. Greetings to you Corbett Girl, RJ Wertermeyer, I see Cynthia Perez from Argentina. Ladeng, how's it going from uh, Australia? Melbourne, Australia. Melbourne or Sydney? Jackie Smith, how are you doing? Greetings to you on the way in Atlanta, Georgia. SK Cotton, Arjan, uh, Rose Patel, how's it going? I haven't seen you in ages, Rose. I hope all is well. All right, so here we go. here you can catch the N R W F Q four, five, and six trains. Anderson Oliveira, greetings to you. I see Jeff as well. Greetings, Jeff. Okay, we can exit this way. We can exit this way. I like this exit better. So we're gonna go down this way. We're gonna go up this way. Greetings to you, Valerie. I see Teddy as well. I see Emma. Greetings, SK. SK Cotton. Barbara Grady, how's it going? Nice seeing you, Barbara. I haven't seen you in a while, Rose Patel from Barbados, right? Happy birthday to you, Rose. Wow, it looks like it's everybody's birthday this month, huh? Stephen Barrier, how you doing? Ready to see Steve. Stephen. Sydney, Australia, okay. Whoa. Melbourne. That's the, that's the competition, right? Melbourne is the competition, right? Ah, Melbourne people. Melbourne people. Sydney people are better, right? Sydney is so much better, right? Although from a Sydney cider, I do love Melbourne and it is a coffee culture and cosmopolitan. Good coffee culture. I love it. We're in. Jackie is saying April is the best month to just say. Yeah, it seems like everybody's birthday is this month. I had no idea everybody was born in April. Interesting. Let's exit this way. I like this area. Oh, great. Awesome. <laughs> Awesome. I did not know that. I had no idea. I had no idea there was a Greek parade today. Man, there's always a parade every weekend uh, in New York, it seems. It's hard to keep up. I just saw the flag. I was like, oh, it's a Greek flag. It's awesome. Okay. Back 
Greetings to you, Cynthia. The dang is in Melbourne. I'm jealous as it has tennis and F1. Oh, I see. And just built better, but New York is the best thing. Yeah, New York is a different beast, my friend. New York is a different, a different level of a city. Robin Lyles is saying my birthday is Tuesday. Really? The 16th? Happy birthday to you, Robin. Wow. I guess we're gonna have to change our birthdays to April then, huh? So that we can all celebrate in one week. Maybe one month. Maybe we should all set it up that way, huh? We should all just change it to April. Natasha, Natasha Bell, how are you doing? Nice seeing you, Natasha. Greetings to you. All right, heading right across the street is Bloomingdale. So you guys know about that one. All the fancy schmancy stores are located at Bloomingdale's. If you like to shop, you know, for high-end brands, that is one place where you can find all the great brands, all the high-end brands. I would say. Greetings to you, uh, Nancy Ashby from Baltimore, Maryland. Catherine is saying, Rob, amazing how you know all the flags. I enjoy that type of stuff, actually. Me and my nerd friends, you know, back in uh, middle school, we used to just like look at maps and stuff and, you know, look at uh, capital cities of states, capital cities of, you know, different countries and flags and stuff, you know, for fun. That's what we used to do. I love it. So uh, I, have, I, have, I have a good amount of memory of uh, flags and cities from that time. OT Sinks is here. Greetings to OT. We are on Lexington Avenue right now in East 59th Street. Here you'll find some really, really nice apartment buildings, office buildings, stores. This is this is the type of New York they show you on TV all the time. On movies, on sitcoms, and everything in between. Anjani, how are you doing? Anjani is saying, hi Rob, taking care of yourself? I'm trying to, but this week has not been good for me. My health has not been good. So, uh, yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to go outside. I think this is the first time I walked uh, for this long, I guess, in about a week. Since I, la since I last saw you guys, the first time. My health has not been good, but I'm trying. I'm trying my friends. I don't know. I'm beyond exhausted about my health and everything in life. All right, remember the other day I had told you guys about Capital One Cafe, where you can uh, come in, you know, to do work, Hang out with friends. This is another location here, Cafe One, or Capital One Cafe. So what you do is uh, you show you show your Capital One card. You know you can come in with a friend. You know they have good internet. You know plenty of space. And uh, oh, that's a nice dog. Plenty of space, so you could just bring your computer, get some coffee, and the you know the coffee is discounted because you know they're assuming that you have. You're going to be using um, a Capital One card, so you should show your Capital One card. Okay, with 
Dot card and get a discount. Greetings to you, Alex and Cindy Mondale. This is the type of coffee they have. Verb coffee. I believe it's from. Uh, I believe it is from. Oh, Central Park is this way. Brooklyn. What art is displayed here at the lobby at 731 Lexington? You guys know about these arts, right? This place, the art they put inside, you know, lobbies and then inside buildings. Those arts are really, really, really expensive. And they're usually curated by uh, famous artists. Cynthia saying, nice place, like the big windows. Oh, you mean at Bloomingdale's? <laughs> Johnny, you're funny. Row, row your boat gently down the stream. Life is but a dream. Uh, uh, I like that. That's awesome. How's everybody doing now? How's, how's everybody's health, well-being? How's everybody doing? Is everybody doing good? Oh man, I should have. I should have. Uh, I should have come out for the Greek, for the Greek parade. Oh man. Jeez. Oh, the Capital One, oh, okay. Yeah, it's pretty nice. And they do have, you know, a few locations, especially in Midtown. And uh, almost all the locations are pretty nice except one of them one of them it's not that it's not nice but it's kind of tiny but this one is uh definitely one of the nicest ones and the other day friends i made a, I made a little mix up on this on this brand right here pollo campero i switched up the country so it's actually from guatemala but people think it is from el salvador i said it is from El Salvador, but people think it's from Guatemala, so the other way around. But in any case, it is Pollo Campero right there. It is from Guatemala. It is from Guatemala. It's just interesting that uh, some people just stand, you know, and just stare at you and not say anything. All right, and then here we have Chick-fil-A. Man, Chick-fil-A is just disappointing me, to be honest. Just the more I learn about the ingredients of Chick-fil-A, I'm like, come on, man. Like, you don't need, you know, 120,000 ingredients for just, for just uh, you know, chicken sandwich and mac and cheese. A bit too much. Thank you so much, Mark. Mark, uh, Mark is always the first one to like and share. That is much appreciated, my friend. Thank you, thank you so much, Mark. You're awesome. Mark Peacock, thank you. All right, which way should we go? Which way should we go? All right, I'm gonna go down this way and then I'm gonna turn left. And then we have the historic Hotel 57 right there. I don't even know if it's, if it's occupied right now. I haven't seen anybody going in out of that building go down this way and then do a little tour enjoy as many parts of the city as possible some da bitch what's going on my friend i haven't seen you in ages i sent you uh, a couple of pictures of uh the church that i visited recently check your email whenever you get a chance Micah, Micah is here from Germany, Hamburg, Germany. Thank you for joining in. Did I say that right, Micah? Or is it Misha? Thank you for joining in. Concrete jungles, where, so the concrete jungles are pretty much right in this area. A lot of them are. And then of course, in lower Manhattan. Street jungles where dreams are made of. And then 
here we have a French blend a French uh, household goods brand household items Roche Bobby I think that is how you pronounce it Aisha might be able to help us Man, I haven't been in this neighborhood in ages it looks as like nice and as delightful as it always is and down that way is East 56th 56th Street. Right now we are on East 57th. And if you keep going up, you'll see a lot of apartment buildings to your right. It's just apartment after apartment after apartment to the right, all the way down, all the way up. There's a lot of apartments in this neighborhood. That way as well. In addition to, uh, it's kind of like, you know, a mirror image of uh, the Upper West Side. But I don't know, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not the biggest fan of the Upper East Side, except, you know, for, for uh, just, you know, coffee shops and bakeries and things like that. But the Upper West Side is just more, I don't know, more calm. Just has a good vibe to it. Eduardo from Argentina. Bienvenidos, Argentina. I have a couple of people from Argentina today. That's awesome. Link NYC. Alright, time to see all these beautiful buildings. So you might actually recognize, you know, a couple of these buildings on sitcoms and stuff, you know, from uh, like early 2000s, late 90s and stuff. So what they do most of the time, and you know, what Hollywood does is, you know, they depict a place as if it's in New York, but most of the recording is done in California, just like Seinfeld. Seinfeld, you know, most of, almost like over 90% of the episodes were uh, recorded in California, in LA. That's how it is, you know, they have big studios out there. But when they want to show, like, you know, specific things, they come back and, you know, record in New York. But other than that, most of the recording is done in California. What in the world is this? Thank you so much, thank you so much, the Girl. the Girl seems like already liked and shared. That is much appreciated. What in the world is this? And yeah, here's also, you know, where, where you'll find a lot of the finance bros, you know, who work in uh, lower Manhattan. Catherine, this is, this is where you would find the finance bros from lower Manhattan. You're living in their cozy, nice apartments, you know. Even on the weekends, all they talk about, like, is just stocks. Yeah, the outside on that one just seems just absolutely catastrophic, man. Absolutely. It's just that, you know, we've been, we've been looking on it. We've been looking at it for some time now. Just the team. The team is excited about it for Monday to open. And just purchase as much as we put in order for as much as possible. I can't even say without laughing. in New York there's a lot of social clubs uh, social clubs are sort of like you know the money makers for different people for, for a different you know, organizations so a lot of those you know finance bros and stuff they uh, they are members of you know different clubs social clubs so yeah, in addition to you know doing research on stocks and stuff during the week and you know putting on and putting trades and stuff on the weekend they do the same as well they pretty much they pretty much just you know talk about uh, stocks that's all they talk about I had a roommate you know worked for a bank he's a banker I lived with him for a couple of months, man. What an odd fellow. One of the oddest people, one of the most odd people I've ever met in my life. 
And, you know, I'm pretty much, you know, I can, you know, I can deal with all kinds of people. I mean, you can put me, you can put me in any environment. It's not that difficult for me. But him, oh my goodness. That was your back. You never know what he's going to say. Like, he wakes up in the morning and he would just be, you just say the most random thing. And just, you know, he likes to argue. He likes to, like, debate. You know, all day. I'm like, dude, I ain't got no time for this. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you so much. Miss your walks. I haven't seen you in ages, too. Nice seeing you all. And as you can see here, it becomes a lot more quieter. You know, still, still definitely cleaner. Definitely clean. Now, key, my man. How you doing, my friend? Nice seeing you all. From Spain, you have to remind me which city you live in. I know you have mentioned it before, but if you could remind me, I would greatly appreciate it. Surfing tangents, how are you doing? Catherine the same. Wonder what they say about about uh, truth uh, social shares. <laughs> Yeah, to be honest with you, with the finance guys, as long as it makes them money, uh, as long as they can make you know good profit, as long as they can uh, make good investments, they really don't care about anything. I guarantee you, they do not care. Money is their ultimate goal. My roommate used to say like, you know, I used to be like, you know, angry and say like, oh, 2008, you know, how could that happen? You know, all these people. All these bankers, all these banks, this and that, you know. Like a rational person, he would be like, so what? Uh, he would be like, oh, well, you know, somebody somebody has to be screwed so that others can make money. That was that was his logic. He would literally just look, at me, look me in the eyes and say, oh, well, you know, somebody has to be screwed so that others could make money. What's wrong with that? Like, what? joking anyway and uh justine how's it going nice seeing you justine all the way from the netherlands and right across the street we have birch coffee you guys know about birch coffee i love birch coffee um i i haven't been there in ages i i don't know if it's still owned by the same owners i don't know if it's still under the same management you know the thing about coffee shops in new york city especially if you see them sprawling all over the city and if you see a few you know coffee of the same coffee shops within you know the same neighborhood was within the same area it's it's a red flag because sometimes you know maybe a venture capitalist might have bought the brand or um might have been bought by a bigger company you know that type of stuff so you have to be a little careful with that but usually like i said like i always say you cannot go wrong with double shot of espresso with an espresso so wherever you go just you know ask for an espresso i think that would be a lot better but in any case back in the day two three years ago birch coffee is one of my stops especially the one in lower manhattan in the financial district you know, they, they had a tiny place there. I don't know if, if they still do. And the coffee was great. The service was great. I would keep going back, you know. When uh, when coffee was less than, you know, $4, you know. Remember back in the day, two years ago? Yeah. Not so much anymore. Greetings to you, Hazim. Paul. Paul is here too. Greetings. So just like uh, Blue Bottle. Blue Bottle, you know, was started by, you know, some guy in San Francisco who loved, you know, loves coffee. It seemed like, you know, like a counterculture coffee it was doing well. And then all of a sudden, we see Blue Bottle popping up everywhere, right? Even during the pandemic when everybody was shutting down, Blue Bottle was just, you know, opening up new locations, new sites every, everywhere. Not just in New York, you know, in D.C. and other cities in San Francisco. 
and so on. Later on, we learned that it is owned by Nestle. Nestle bought Blue Bottle. So that type of stuff, and obviously the quality is not going to be the same. You know, they they uh, they got to look at their bottom lines. You know, they got to look at their profits. They're going to make sure that you know they run it according to the Nestle rules and regulations and strategies and mission plans, right? Yeah. Gee, see, we have the right of way, but this guy is zipping through the street like you know he has the right of way. That that's New York. Right, and of course, you know, in every corner of the city, in every part of the city, we have Equinox. I wonder, I wonder if this one is a little cheaper. Let's see what the price is like. Oh, they got a swimming pool and everything. Shh. They better have, you know, they better have a private chef for me. They better have a private chef for me waiting, waiting until I'm done. Not even, not even, you know, make the food and leave. I'd rather have the chef wait for me until I'm done and cook me some fresh meat. If I'm paying six, seven hundred dollars a month, four or five hundred dollars a month for a gym. That ain't right. Right? If not, I'm just going to I'm just gonna go to Blink Fitness or just you know. Do my regular walks. Adriana Rodriguez, greetings. I see a big girl, greetings to you. Maxi is saying, is asking, rather, is Folgers good coffee? No, no, it's not. Folgers coffee is not good. No bueno at all. Yeah, I would rather just, you know, get maybe um, like Dunkin' Donuts or something, you know? Why am I standing and waiting like I'm a tourist? Yeah, so I would not, uh, I would not recommend Folgers. Folgers uh, apparently tends to use a lot of sawdust in their coffee. So the coffee that you're getting is not 100% coffee. They use a lot of fillers. Cheapos. Hey, that's a California license plate. Dude is from California. I don't even know who you're talking about. Nice. Everybody's moving out of California. Roxanne Robles, Mauricio de Leon. You guys watching? Are you guys watching? Oh. Okay, let's go down this way. And I like the Upper East Side because of uh, you know the the missions and the consulates, and obviously you know the different uh, offices relating to different countries. We have one coming up. Greetings, greetings to all of you again. So, and I All right, right across the street we have Zambia. That is Zambia, right? Yep. I like these missions. Some of them are consulates, some of them are missions. Let's see what this is. Oh, this is a mission. Permanent mission of the Republic of Zambia to the United Nation. One Zambia, one nation. There you go. That is their flag right there. Zambia is known for iron ore. Zambia is one of the biggest producers of iron ore. Oh, here we have the Hungarian Cultural Center. Anybody from Hungary? Anybody? Anybody from Hungary living in Denmark right now? Yeah, this is a straightforward. This one is straightforward. And the consulate is here too, I believe. I believe.
believe the consulate. Yep, that's what I thought. Consulate General of Hungary. Magia, Magia Roskashak, Fokanajura la Tsutsa. Did I pronounce that right? Interesting. They got their diplomatic uh, vehicles outside. So it looks like. Looks like they have the um, embassy, I'm, I'm sorry, the consulate, the cultural center, and the mission all in one. And this is where you can get your Hungary visa, looks like. Visa department, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, between 9.30 and 1.30. But if you are an American citizen, Canadian citizen, British citizen, Australian, all that stuff, you do not need a visa. You just get up and leave. Just get up and go. All right, right across the street we have another Hilton. There's a lot of Hiltons in the city, by the way. Back in the day, we used to have a lot more Hiltons, but after the pandemic, not so much. That's a Garden Inn, a little better than better than Hampton Inn. <laughs> Catherine, that's funny. Greetings to you, Lindhurst. <laughs> that's funny. I just had breakfast, so I'm not that hungry right now. But yeah, if you're hungry, you better eat because we might see a lot of food. We might see a lot of restaurants. We might see a lot of cafes, all that stuff. So be sure to eat and fill up that tank. Uh, Josh Dean is saying in the Zambezi River. Okay, I've heard of that one, but I've never actually looked into it. Is it nice? Because I know Zimbabwe has Victoria Falls, which is absolutely amazing, which is beautiful. Zimbabwe, you know, Zimbabwe's uh, Victoria Falls is just absolutely phenomenal. A lot of people are able to uh, get actually, you know, a lot closer to the falls than, you know, any other place. So it's definitely, definitely nicer to get a little closer. People literally just like get so close to the falls and sit, you know, sit at the top. I've never, I've never seen anybody get that close at any other fall, anywhere. Justin is saying in Paris you have a Hilton Hotel, the Paris Hilton. Ah, that's funny. <laughs> you know, it's so funny every time we say something about Paris Hilton, right? Every time we bring up her name, I end up seeing Paris Hilton, you know, seeing Paris Hilton on my TikTok. The other day, you know, she was, I guess, flying to Jamaica or something on her private jet with her kids. Anyway, um, yeah. She popped up on my TikTok page. I'm like, wait a minute, that's Paris Hilton. We just talked about her today. And yeah, she was uh, she was flying somewhere out of the Caribbean, I believe, to ja from Jamaica. And you know what she had on the plane? Dunkin' Donuts. I said, I was like, oh Lord, I had no idea the Hiltons eat Dunkin' Donuts. I had no idea. What is this place? Never seen this one before. I am shocked. Never seen this one before. This is a cafe, a coffee shop. But why is it closed on a Sunday? Like it's, like it's Chick-fil-A. Vanessa Hunter saying, uh, you are my favorite. You always make me want to walk with you. I hope you feel better. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. That's very kind of you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, this week, uh, this week had been another relapse, you know. Just health completely going downhill. Yeah. It's exhausting. 
I miss the good old days where I could just like, you know, get up and do whatever I want and, you know, walk as often as I can, you know, want and just do whatever I, you know, I want. Just not, not worrying about anything, you know. Not like that anymore, unfortunately. But I appreciate you, Vanessa. You're very thoughtful. Thank you so much. Yeah, I got a message that kind of like threw me off that said, oh, get your health in order so that you can walk for us often. I'm like, oh, what? Yeah. Like, Do I look like I'm funded by the taxpayers? Wait. Wait. Anyway, it's good to, it's good to see messages like that. Najuma Brown, greetings to you from uh, Long Island. Monica E, how's it going? Ten. Adriana saying, Rob, will be, we will be visiting a lot of churches in Italy. I'll pray for you so you can get better. Thank you so much, Adriana Rodriguez. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's very nice of you. When are you, uh, when are you traveling to uh, Italy? Thank you so much, uh, Julie. right across the street like everywhere else obviously in the city thank you so much thank you so much Sheila Thompson Sheila Thompson I've not seen you for ages how are you doing all right over here they have something good which I'm gonna tell you about in a second here you can find some coffee and foods the coffee is okay but they have balsar bread. Balsar bread, if you haven't tried it in New York City, it is one of the best breads. They're not available everywhere, unfortunately. So you can't just, you know, pick it up from anywhere. You would have to go to their locations, which are not plenty. And you would have to go all the way to lower Manhattan. But, but, but their, breads, their breads are pretty good. And here, we used to have, back in the day, we used to have Maison Kaiser. If you know Maison Kaiser, you know their bakeries are on point, on top, you know? Unfortunately, we do not have any Maison Kaiser locations that I know of in New York City at this time. But back in the day, we used to have a few locations here, you know? Midtown and man, their bakeries are super, super, super amazing. Pretty good. Uh, Adriana saying we are leaving Wednesday night. Nice. Which city are you flying into? I'm assuming Rome, maybe Naples, or maybe Florence. One of those. Jeff, thank you, thank you so much for the support. Jeff is saying, hope everything is okay and uh, you are feeling better soon. I hope so, I really hope so. Uh, it's been tough, to be honest. I can sustain a lot of pain, but my health uh, is making it difficult to sustain, to endure pain for, for an extended period of time. I'm trying though. All right, we have the beautiful Chrysler building right there at a distance, as you can see. Roma. Oh, bellissimo. Bellissimo Roma. It's awesome. All right, and to the left we have the... Oh, wait a minute. They changed it? What the... What in the world? When did this happen? So... Back in the day, back in the day, friends, not even, not even a long time ago, this building right here used to be a Hilton Hotel. This building right here was a double tree Hilton Hotel. But it looks like it's now a different uh, brand. I mean, it doesn't even look like a hotel. I think it's probably an apartment building. Interesting. The name is uh, found. Okay, maybe it's like a short-term 
apartment rental building maybe maybe like a corporate housing could be one of those but i i had no idea that they changed it to uh, a different brand wow this used to be a double tree hilton for years for ages let's see if we can find out interesting this guy my friend, when did they change this uh, from uh, Hilton? It used to be Hilton, right? Less than a year ago. Is it like an apartment building now? Or? Uh, it's a uh, dormitory. Thank you. I usually don't go for these types of stores. I'm not a fan. Oh, take a look at that, Adriana. This one is for you. Since you've already been in New York. I survived my trip to New York City. That's funny. Ah, Walker shortbreads are delicious. Yes. I'm glad everybody knows about them. Ah, they're addicting, right? I don't even like butter, you know, but uh, those ones are really good. I'm just ah. That's the hotel. All you need is one or two. They are so rich and buttery. Ah, you're so nice, Cynthia. Oh my goodness. One or two? You mean like one or two uh, like plates or <laughs> just like one or two pieces? Oh, Jethro is here from South Africa. Greetings, greetings from Joburg, right? I saw the movie Bob Marley and I liked it. Some parts were confusing, but I liked it. I, I did not get a good review for some reason. What's going on, John? John is here, friends from Maryland. We have a couple of people from Maryland today. Nancy Ashby and uh, John, both from Maryland. All right, so for those of you who like history and who wanna keep count and track of all the New York City landmarks, New York State landmarks, I should say. There you go, this is the Benjamin Hotel. It was built in 1926-27. Isn't that crazy? Michelle, Michelle from Texas, you're watching? This looks like something that you like. It's been around since 1926. And obviously a landmark. The Benjamin. I wonder if Benjamin Franklin ever, ever thought about this hotel. Wait. Oh, wait. Benjamin Franklin was long gone before this time. He was already gone. He was already too, too gone. The Dang, the saying of the Bob Marley movie was created with the direct consult from Bob Marley's children. A lot of truth to that. We have the Waldorf Astoria. God knows when this place is gonna open. It's been under construction, renovation, you know, all kinds of surgery for ages. It hasn't opened yet. I don't think it's gonna open anytime soon. 
and I believe now it's owned by a Chinese government affiliated uh, company, right? They came in and bought it. They're like, how much you need? How much you need? We got you. But what they're going to do is uh, convert these into uh, apartments as well. In addition to the hotel and people. I guess we'll have to bid maybe for the apartments. I don't know how it's going to work. But yeah. Just like, you know, most of the nice hotels in New York City, they have both. They have the hotel side and they have the apartment side. Just like the Plaza Hotel, the Baccarat Hotel, you name it. They usually, at the park, you know, they all have the apartment side and the hotel side. And Waldorf Astoria apartments ain't going to be cheap. It's going to be a lot of competition. A lot of foreigners are probably not going to bring in their money and outbid a lot of people in the U.S. Evening to you, Birmingham close-up. I can't be English today. I'll try, but I don't know. Today's not a good day to be British. Not when I'm feeling unhealthy. Uh, John is saying I visited New York a couple of weeks ago. We stayed at the Belvedere, Belvedere Hotel. Nice. That's a good hotel. Definitely want to come back. We enjoyed it. Rode the subway. Just definitely want to stay at a different hotel. That is smart. Yeah, if you're going to be visiting New York often, if you're going to keep coming back, I would highly recommend, you know, changing different places or to, to different places or even boroughs in general last time you know if you stayed in manhattan next time you know stay in brooklyn the next time you know in queens another time maybe in the bronx you know maybe not south bronx but the bronx you know new york city has a lot to offer friends uh, it's just i know midtown manhattan is like the place to be for a lot of reasons but this city man this city has a lot to offer you could spend a lifetime exploring the city. It's just so much to see here. All right, I'm seeing another building. Look at that. Summer intern housing. Take a look at that. And usually a lot of these places are not cheap at all. Is this one a dorm? Yeah, that looks like it is a dorm. It looks like it is. See, that's the same name. That's the, that, that's the same name as the other building right there. Found. It looks like they found a good location. It looks like, ooh, this A4 is nice. How deep A4? Jeff is saying, how many languages do you speak? I speak a little bit of a few, few languages, but that's about it. Getting a lot of things done. Apparently, apparently, if you don't sleep well for, for, for a long period of time, your memory kind of goes down, kind of dies down. Especially, especially in terms of languages. And that's been that's been the case for me at least. Anyway, here we have Ole and Steen. A Danish bakery multiple locations lots and lots of delicious bakeries here my friends oh my goodness I, I've been good you know I've been good cutting on uh, bakeries and baked goods but sometimes I like to see them I like to just stare at them from a distance and say hello hello you know just to say hello look at these delicious goods And at least these guys, you know, have not jacked up their prices like the other bakeries in the city, you know? Oh, are those raisins? Oh my lord. Oh, Mary Cranberries? Oh my goodness. They are just delicious looking. Amazing. Oh, they also got some breads here. Oat breads, uh, flax seed, poppy seeds, all that good stuff. I would highly, highly, highly recommend this place. Highly, highly.
then we have the Lexington Hotel right across the street. Alright, so friends, we are staying on the east side right now. That's what we're doing. We always spend a lot of time, a good deal, a good amount of time. A great deal of time on the west side. So today, we are going to be touring. Most of the east side, midtown east, up the east side. All that good stuff. What is this? Park Avenue Kitchen. Hey, it looks, it looks uh, fancy, schmancy. Alright, kind of looks like a dining hall. Slash diner. Loving it. Ladang is saying, Rob, I know you cut down, but come on, no cheat day once a week, uh, just go wild on the pastries. <laughs> I do, I do, I do uh, have a cheat day, you know, once in a while, but not a whole lot. Once, once, maybe every couple of weeks. I have to walk a lot, you know, to, to justify it. And, you know, the. the and the other thing is just the prices, you know. Before COVID or even during COVID, you know, like you could spend $3 on a croissant. And you're like, oh, that's not bad. You know, it's just $3. Maybe three fifty, dollars right, at the most. Now, everything starts at 6 6 50 And then the portion is a lot smaller than it used to be. At least 20% smaller than we used to be. So how could you justify that, you know? Sometimes it don't make sense. I don't know how it is in uh, Australia. But over here we've had shrinkflation for some time, for a couple of years now. And it's only getting worse. Greg Spout, greetings to you. OT Sinks is making some petty petty chicken. Nice with lamb ribs and potato wedges and beans. Nice. That's awesome. <laughs> Chris Mothers is saying a minute on the lips, a lifetime on the hips. <laughs> I just, want to, I just want to cut down on sugar because, you know, if I start eating, there's no stopping. Thompson, I wasn't going, hey, Joe, Joe Hernandez. You know, I was just going to make a Joe comment, right? Because I saw Joe's coffee, but then I didn't see you. So uh, anyway, let me just show it to you anyway, since you're here. But before that. Let's stop and uh, smell the tulips. Jim Barrows, greetings to you. Greetings, greetings, Jim Barrows. Eustacio's here as well. Greetings to Eustacio. All right, so right across the street, we have another Joe's Coffee. Joe Hernandez, if you're wondering. If you're wondering where to get coffee on Lexington Avenue and East 46th Street, it would be right across the street. Dang is saying, yeah, I've uh, cut down on takeaway coffee. I only have it when my partner requests me to go out with her, and I will only go to trusted coffee shops that have straight coffee all the time. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, they just, you know, keep increasing the prices, you know, jacking up prices. So it's uh, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of difficult to justify it, right? To justify spending four or five dollars all the time. I, honestly, lately I've been using uh, instant coffee. That's that's about it. Instant coffee, you know, I make some milk, make some cappuccino, you know, with a couple of shots of espresso. That's what I've been doing because it's just the prices are just ridiculous. Too ridiculous, my friend. All right. 
fine. Curry and Tandoor is still open. I came here many years ago. Uh, I used to have a friend uh, who lived in that building right there, apartment building down that way. So I would stop at uh, Curry and Tandoor. It's a halal spot too. My man OT sinks. So if you come to New York City, this is a good spot. And back in the day, at least their prices were great. It's a small place, but definitely worth it. Good stuff. Good food. All right, let's see what the prices are. Okay, that's not bad. Still not bad at all. Take a look at that, Joe. Midtown, these type of prices, unheard of. Not so easy to find, especially at a good establishment like this one, at a good clean establishment like this one. Definitely worth it. I got the chicken vindaloo, chicken korma. You can also get uh, non vegetarian oh, options. Here. Goat curry, take a look at that. Goat curry with veggies. $13.50, that's not bad at all. Adrian Washington, how are you doing? Greetings. Chris Mothers is saying, absolutely, I use my Keurig. Do you like Keurig? you enjoy it? Does it make good coffee? Oh, I had no idea Botswana was here. This is so awesome. Take a look at this, friends. This is the permanent mission of the Republic of Botswana to the United Nations. One of the countries that I would love to visit one day. Goodness, I had no idea Botswana was here. And they always occupy, you know, these missions and consulates, they always occupy like prime real estate. It doesn't matter how rich, how poor the country is. But interesting, yeah, the flag is like folded up, so that's 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 the main reason that I didn't notice it. That makes sense. They need to like unfold it here. They, they have a beautiful flag. This is the mission. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. This is so cool. I think Botswana is one of the biggest uh, producers of uh, diamond in the world. And they also uh, cut most of their diamonds before shipping it elsewhere. They are, they are a very, very, very uh, resource-rich country. Greetings to you, San Mukherjee. How are you doing, my friend? San Mukherjee saying, has the tipping culture gone more worse there? Absolutely. Oh yeah, you got a tip for everything. Yeah, if you ask for a direction, you might, you might, you know, you might be asked for a tip. Somebody might pull up a phone. And give you the percentage, you know, 10%, 15, 20. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not like Europe, my friend, over here. You know, the problem is, you know, a lot of companies, a lot of businesses, they don't really pay that well. So, the employees, you know, they have to rely on tips. And sometimes, you know, the tips are good, sometimes they're not. So, it's just, uh, they have to, let's say, this week they did pretty well the following week they don't and the next week they don't you know get as many tips then it becomes really stressful you know they have to like work more or hope that they get tips you know a good amount of tips it's not consistent you know when something is not consistent it's just it puts a lot of pressure on them companies usually don't like to pay a good livable wage. So, all right, we've got a steakhouse here, famous steakhouse. Yeah, but it's very unfortunate. Yeah, in Europe, you know, they, they serve you regardless, you know, with the same level of service because, you know, they're going to get paid anyway. They'll be able to pay their rent, you know, food, and just, you know, be able to pay their bills, right? In the U.S. it's not like that, especially in New York, if you don't get tips, if you don't get enough tips, my friend, you are going to be the next, uh, next vic the next victim of the homelessness crisis in New York. 
Yep. In New York, a lot of people are just like one day, one week, one paycheck away from becoming homeless. It's very unfortunate. People are just fighting to survive. Sayana Singh have a oops. I have a flatmate now here. He's from upstate. Nice. And he was saying 50% tip pain. That was too much. 726 USD for a coffee. That's too much. Yeah. So with coffee, you know, uh, if you do 10, that's enough. But you're right. It adds up. At times it adds up. But if it's a couple of people with you, and if you're the one paying, that makes a difference as well. But to the most part, for coffee unless you're going to be sitting there and spending a lot of time and I think 10% 15 sometimes is enough you have to go all out the issue is more so when you know when you go out when you when you go out for dinner for lunch you have to like sit down and eat then you're gonna you're looking at at least you know at least at the very least the 15 percent tip and now you know even if you're doing takeaway sometimes they might just ask you they might say like oh you're gonna tip i mean they might they might not say it expi explicitly but um they might just you know flip uh the screen on the ipad and you know prompt you to uh, go ahead and tip. And sometimes everybody's staring at you, so you have to tip a little bit. At least. Yeah, it's very unfortunate, man. It is very, very, very You know the other problem is all the all the tip that you know these companies collect is no guarantee that you know all of it is going to go towards the employees so if you actually want to tip especially if it's more than a dollar more than you know a couple of dollars i would say get it in cash and uh, give it to the employees directly just put it in a, in a tip jar Otherwise, you know, if it's like lumped, if it's all lumped together, you just never know. The owner, the business might take a good chunk of it and pretend like, you know, it's their salary or their wage. Wow. UAE is just taking it to the next level, friends. So you guys know this neighborhood is filled with uh, missions. There's a lot of missions left and right because we're close to the United Nations. But here we have the permanent mission of the United Arab Emirates to the United Nations. Look at this. This entire building, this entire building here belongs to the UAE. Ah, look at that oil money at work. Wow, this is their national emblem. You know, at least, you know, at least, you know, the UAE government takes care of its people. They take care of their people in terms of health, in terms of education, in terms of uh, housing, in terms of everything, you know? The Emirati people, they ain't even worried about anything. The government makes sure that everybody is taken care of, you know? And if they spend this much money on a mission, it's just like, you know? It's no problem, you know? But we have our government that spends billions of dollars on foreign nations, foreign countries, without taking care of its own people. We have so many homeless people. So many people that go to bed hungry. There's so many people living below poverty. Always, always have money for others. Pretty sad. It's a beautiful.
beautiful building, right? And imagine it's the entire building. It's not even, they ain't even sharing with anybody. They're not rooming with anybody. You know, and it's not like a tiny, you know, two story building like the one of, you know, Botswana either. And then here we have the mission of Tergie. This is the Tergie mission building right here. One of the newest uh, missions here on, in, in Midtown East. Look at how nice it is, how beautiful it is. There's the Turkish flag right there. So when this opened, uh, a few high level officials came, you know, from Turkey. And, you know, obviously during the meetings when Erdogan came to, uh, came to New York, he met with Elon Musk in this building right here. Elon Musk and Erdogan had a discussion in this building. And apparently, apparently Erdogan asked uh, Elon Musk, he's like, where's your wife? You know, he came with his kids, but his wife wasn't there. He's like, where's your wife? Why are you by yourself? <laughs> Why are you just holding the kids by yourself? He's like, oh no, she's not here. And then he, the guy goes like, where is she? <laughs> so funny. The cultural differences, right? And uh, yeah, Mayor Adams is uh, being investigated, as you already know, by the FBI, by the federal government because of this building here. Apparently this building here had a lot of safety code violations and it wasn't, it wasn't supposed to open without a certification from the FDNY. And in that process, Mr. Mayor Adams, back in the day, he was a borough president of Brooklyn. He made a few phone calls to get this uh, permit approved for this building and because of that if you remember a couple of uh, a couple of weeks ago I should say or a few weeks ago the FBI stopped Mayor Adams and took his phone and, and they also went to uh, his assistant's home in, in the Bronx they raided her house and took a lot of evidence from her house it is because of this building right here. If you didn't know, now you know. The feds come, usually they have a good reason. And right now it's a little, you know, there's a little bit of commotion here at the, at the United Nations because the United Nations Security Council is having a meeting today, an emergency meeting because of the uh, altercation the confrontation between Iran and Israel. Because of that, right now, uh, officials from a few countries are meeting inside this building. I don't know. I don't know if they're done. If they're done as of now, or maybe these guys are also waiting for them to come out. But yeah, that, friends, is the United Nations building. That's the General Assembly right there to the left. The main building headquarters is to the right. And uh, yeah, a lot of representatives from uh, mainly the, the Security Council are inside the building right now meeting. Uh, and Chris Mothers, they're investigating. The FBI, I mean, they take their time to investigate, but when they do come to investigate, when they come, you know, to a, a location to raid, they usually have a good reason. And apparently he flew to Turkey and he flew first class. He was upgraded to first class. He got a little, you know, some perks, you know, from the government, from the Turkish government. So they're still investigating everything. He's still under investigation. I don't know much about the investigation as of now because it's not public. But yeah, the feds are watching Mary Adams. Remember a couple of months ago? The feds came, they stopped his whole entourage and, you know, they stopped his car and they took his phone. Remember that one? Imagine, Mayor Adams usually has, what, at least 20, 30 security guards around him? Sometimes even more, depending on how big the event is, wherever he goes, right? That did not matter for the feds, baby. The feds did not care. What the? What is she doing? Did you guys see that? 
these drivers in New York. only report from the outside and the permanent mission of the United States of America to the United Nations is right across the street right there on East 45th Street and that building right there is the UNDP building they used to intern right there back in the day they used to shadow high-level officials in that building and I had a chance to go inside the United Nations as well yeah so come September time when there's the uh, General Assembly meeting you I will not be able to walk like this so I'll not be able to go near the street right here near the United Nations impossible even with the press pass you have to do a few verifications for me to go through all right, this is the mission office, or the mission in general, of the U.S. of A. The president right there, Vice President Anthony Blinken. And all the way to the end is Linda Thomas Greenfield. She is the representative of the United States to the United Nations. She started her career, I believe, in Liberia as an ambassador. She moved up and now she is the representative of the U.S. and the United Nations. And here we have the building that I mentioned, the UNDP building. One of the first high-level officials that I shadowed was actually a British official. How oh, interesting, right? building I have a grill here so most of these buildings here are either offices of you know offices related to the United Nations maybe like UNICEF UNDP or one of those or apartment buildings apartment buildings where people who uh, work for the United Nations live in Hotel. This is another Hilton Hotel here. There's always a lot of security here, as you can imagine. Sometimes, you know, there's like famous people and I don't know who they are. But if they are government officials, high-level officials, you should can identify them. They are. To the left is the UNICEF building right there. I believe the director of the UNICEF now is from the U.S. as well. So the U.S. pretty much dominates the United Nations for obvious reasons. The, United, the U.S. is uh, the biggest uh, source of fund for the United Nations. By far the biggest. So it has, it has the power to manipulate the United Nations. And here we have Kuwait, mission of the Kuwait, of the state of Kuwait, right here. I also got a big building, as you can see, very nice building, with golden doors, just to let you know, they got money, just to let you know, you know, in case you forgot. And coming up, we have another apartment building. Yeah. This neighborhood is pretty much a UN neighborhood. That's all it is. 
UN, 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 UN. Everything that has to do with the UN. Without cost. I just. And then we have the mission of Egypt, Hazim. Hazim, are you watching? The Egyptian mission is right there. Nigerian mission is to the right, right here. This building here is both the mission, the consulate, and the visa center for Nigeria. Abdullahi, you're watching. At, yes, Hazem, you're right. Okay. I think that's enough about the uh, Midtown East area, the United Nations area. So uh, now we can go back to the familiar place. Cyan is saying, my God, my favorite Hilton. Oh yeah, have you stayed at this Hilton? Cyan? Oh, Joe is saying the streets around the United Nations, you can eat off them. Yeah, they do. They do keep them clean. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. You are absolutely right. I guess, you know, they got to make it look clean because, you know, it's the headquarters of the United Nations. And a lot of people from different nations, you know, come to visit and stay here and live here and work here. So they got to give that impression that New York is squeaky clean, right? And that is the part that goes on the media too often. So I have to make sure. I have to make sure whatever goes on media, on media platforms around the world is, is the best part. Willie Ford, how's how you doing my friend? How's it going? Nice seeing you, Willie. I have not seen John Burke for some time. I have not seen, uh, uh, well, I saw I saw Jim Barrows today. I haven't seen a few people for some time. Oh, I haven't seen uh, Schneider Wise. Schneider Wise, I haven't seen you, I hope all is well. John Burke, how's it going? Nice, I was just, I was just asking about you. I was like, I've not seen John Burke. I've not seen uh, Daniel Bobberson as well. Daniel like, as well. Thank you so much, Robin. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'm hoping to uh, get my health, you know, in good standing so that I can, you know, show you every part of New York City. You know, maybe, you know, uh, go live as often as possible. You know, share as many things as possible. You know, regardless, I'm trying. I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best, you know, with, with all the health that I got at the moment. So, uh, but I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Robin. You're awesome. Thank you so much. All right, and then here we have the permanent mission of Senegal. Senegal just elected the youngest president in Africa. They had issues. Uh, the previous president wanted to delay uh, the, the election. He made some bogus reasons. But finally, they have a new president. Anyway. Senegal got an entire building as well? This is crazy. Oh, I guess it's attached to an apartment building. They, they don't actually own the entire building. It's attached to an apartment building. Permanent mission. How do you say this? Aisha, Aisha, I've not seen Aisha for some time as well. How do you how do you say this in, in French? Oh, Cyan, you're in France now, you're in Paris. You're French now pretty much, right? Technically, right? I mean, you've been there for a year. You're French now. Mission Permanente du Senegal auprès de Nations Unies. That's as best as I can do. Ooh, look at that beautiful apartment building right there. Oh my goodness. 
Judith Hinton. Are you seeing that up part? Wow. Who lives there? Ivanka Trump? So nice. Lovely. Even hotels? Never heard of it. But hey, typical owns. You've been asking me a lot about hotels and I've been doing my best to show you as many hotels as possible in New York City to give you plenty of options. So you might want to look into this one as well. See, Joe Hernandez, you look at that. Even the parking lot is pretty nice. Joe Hernandez saying the sign says don't film here. Oh, it didn't? I just made it up, huh? But you never know. You never know because these people, man, these security guards. Watch out, watch out. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. That's the move. Yeah, you never know. Sometimes, you know, they pretend like they don't care, you know, and sometimes they come, you know, they run up to you and say, like, oh, no filming here. No filming. No, no filming. Not allowed. Anyway. Let's never know. They are inconsistent. They are super, super inconsistent. Unfortunately. I wish they were consistent with everybody. I, I've noticed, you know, sometimes, you know, they tell me like, oh, you can't film here. You can't be here. And then I randomly see some TikToker going to that same location and having a blast. Having like a full on party. I'm like, what? Doesn't make sense. Martin Kirby from the UK. How you doing, my friend? Uh, Judith Hinton is saying that's a new one, even hotels. Ah, okay, okay. That makes sense. I'm like, I've never seen that before. But the building, Judith, the one right across the street, the apartment building? Oh my goodness. I bet you that's one of those buildings where you have to like actually deposit yourself, you know, before moving in. Oh, you can move in, but you're going to have to deposit your whole body with us. Not just money, but your whole, your whole body. All right, so here we have Maman Bakery. You guys know about this one? Oh, this is actually Kaba. The one to the right is Kaba. But this one is Maman. Maman apparently has delicious, delicious cookies. I've never tried their cookies, but Adriana Rodriguez, remember this place that you asked me about? And I said, you know, they have lots and lots of uh, locations, many locations throughout the city. This is it. This is like a Mediterranean, Middle Eastern, uh, Israeli spot. Their shakshuka is phenomenal. And unfortunately, they're closed right now. But let me show you the menu from a distance. It's pretty nice. And all their locations are pretty clean, nicely designed, as you can see. Best interior design for a cafe, for a little, you know, bakery slash kitchen. Greetings to Kevin J. Welcome, Kevin. Ooh, I like this uh, slow jazz over here. Nice. Sweet green is over here. For the vegans, vegetarians. I also got the sweet greens. Madman is here, madman is here. Oh 
my goodness, friends. One of the best places to get espresso in New York City. Lars Jorgensen in Germany. Next time you come to New York City, do not forget this one. Unfortunately, most of their locations closed, but it looks like this location is still here. And I would highly recommend the espresso. Their espresso is phenomenal. Madman Espresso. Used to have another location in, uh, in the Lower East Side. Not Lower East Side, actually. Uh, East Village. And I used to go to that one. It was good. The price was good. You know, a tiny place, but the price was good. The service was good. And the coffee was good, most importantly. Anybody from Scotland? Any, any Scotch people here? Patrick Grand Central Hotel I'm surprised they didn't turn this one into a shelter The dang, the last time I uh, tried coffee from Madman was, uh, I think, 20, I want to say 2021, or maybe early 2022. I think so. I think so. I haven't really ventured out to cafes and restaurants uh, in the last at least a year, maybe once or twice. But yeah, the last year has been no. No venturing to cafes, restaurants and stuff. I pretty much go to the same spot, you know, to uh, pick up food. All the way in the Bronx. Or um, in lower Manhattan. Buy food for a couple of days. I get my sardines, you know, sometimes. But in terms of coffee, I've been, I've been drinking, I've, I've mostly been drinking instant coffee. Not been venturing out as much these days. This is the United Nations way. That's the United Nations flag right there on East 43rd and Lexington. Right, obviously, in the Grand Central Market, attached to. Yep, that's that's that. It's been a while, my friend. Everything that I'm telling you thus far is just from from past experience, from past memories. That's why I always put like a little asterisk, you know, whenever whenever I'm speaking, whenever I'm explaining a place. If the management is different, if the ownership is different, you know might not taste as good so but as always you know go with the basics like uh, an espresso shot double shot espresso or something like that anyway so this car that you are seeing right in front of you is a diplomatic vehicle i'm assuming belonging to one of the missions but it looks like this is a very very nice car being transported in this type of vehicle Very nice, ain't it? I wonder what country it is. I wonder what country it is. I'm assuming zero, 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 001. X. Can somebody look up the code? XZG. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess uh, somebody from Europe or maybe the Middle East. A lot of things changed after COVID, absolutely, Catherine. Oh my goodness. Things changed really, really, really fast. People changed, businesses changed, pretty much everything changed. All right, let's go through Hayat today. All right, and here we have Cafe Grumpy. This one is your favorite place, right, the day? Cafe Grumpy, and then uh, we have this. Uh, Hot chocolate spot, the one that I showed you the other day. Wait a minute. They leave the ice cream like this? Oh, that Audi A8? Oh, it's beautiful, right, Joe? It's 
super, super beautiful. Amazing. Fantastic. What is she giving? Who? Who is giving? Oh, I didn't see anybody giving anything. We got a lot of interesting things here, a lot of interesting art. A lot of craft stuff. Jackie from uh, Atlanta, Georgia. I think you might like the store here. It looks like a lot of handmade crafts. Oh, okay. Yes, Joe, that was an Audi, Audi A8. Skin here. I love moleskin. Oh, I know they're expensive, but man, moleskin is just man. You could spend hours in this store. What a great station of this there. And here we have Diptyque, a French brand, a friend, a French luxury brand, luxury perfume. Scent of candles, lot of stuff. Soap, lotion, potion, commotion. What is this? Ah. Radiant skin with biofermant science. Okay. So if I buy one of these, my skin is, uh, is going to look fabulous. Interesting. I've never even heard of the brand before. Learning well, something new every day. Noé Bion? I bet you it's French. I bet you it's French. L'essence de fermentation biotique. This is definitely French. Definitely. Should I just take one of those? And if the police comes, I say, I don't speak English. I don't speak English. I just visit. I don't know English. Sorry, officer. Lots of good things here, right? Oh, you guys know I love Swatch. I just like to look at the different designs and color combinations they have most of the time, especially those ones right there on the wall. Oh. Okay. Looks like we have covered a lot of things. Do you guys want to see a little more? What do you think? Cyan, you do, shh, I'm telling you, I'm French, I'm Caribbean, I'm American, I'm British. You have not seen anything yet, Cyan. You've been missing. You've been missing for months. You've been gone for a while. But I hope I hope school is going well. I hope uh, everything is going good for you in Paris. I hope you're eating a lot of the uh, baguettes, you know, baguette tradition. Going to Montparnasse, going to Eiffel Tower. I know they are getting ready for the Olympics, and you are going to be there. So make sure you enjoy. Yeah, so this is the Grand Central. We we, we just entered in a, you know in a different direction as we normally uh, you know unlike uh, unlike the other side. There's a few entrances to the, on the back side as well. So we chose a different door this time, unlike uh, the other days. But yeah, we are going to the same place as we normally do whenever we come to Grand Central Terminal. Always busy. And you can stand there from the East Balcony and enjoy the views of Grand Central. Where is the Mighty Bull today? This is one of his favorite favorite, favorite places in the city. Getting ready for the Olympics. Yes, they are renovating a lot of their uh, 
sites doing you know overall uh, renovations and upgrades you know the, to the entire city they're building the metro they're doing a lot makes sense though, right I and mean, they're hosting the olympics it's one of the biggest events in the world there's the grand concourse the grand central indeed and the dining hall is underneath this one Uh, Tiffany's clock right there, right in the middle, it's worth like $20 million. Isn't that crazy? We have nine minutes. That little thing right there. Oh, you're good. You're good. No problem. Shelly and Anthony. Did I see Shelly and Anthony from Atlanta? Nice seeing both of you. This is where all the tourists hang out to get the nice shot and glimpse of the Grand Central. Right there. Let's go downstairs. Uh, Willie Ford is saying, Rob, I've worked for Nestle for 34 years. Uh, have you had Taster's Choice or Classico? Both are Nestle items. Yes, I've had both. I've had both. I actually like uh, the, tester the Tester's Choice one a little better than the Classico. It has like a strong uh, roasted flavor to it, so I like that one better. You know what I like better though, when it comes to Nestle? Obviously, I'm not the biggest fan of Nestle, but if I had to, if I had to choose a Nestle brand coffee, it would be the Nescafe Gold. The gold version, my friend, that one is good. I like that one. I was kind of surprised, actually. I was kind of shocked. I was like, wow, this is better than the Nescafe Classico. And even better than uh, the dark roast, you know, uh, t Tester's Choice. So I like that one. I like the Nescafe one. I like that one. Eloy. Eloy is here. How are you doing, Eloy? Maria Cristina from Brazil. Thank you for joining in. Nice seeing you. Kirby, how's it going? I see you, Martin Kirby. Sandra uh, Cruz is saying, oh, I want to go home back to New York. I miss it so much, but I need money. My job is not enough. Yeah, that's the difficult part of New York these days. You know, the pay, the earning, and the living cost just does not does not match at all. Not even the slightest bit, unfortunately. I have not seen Benjamin. I have not seen Benjamin. I hope you're doing good, Benjamin. I have not seen uh, Ben Wise. No, no, not Ben Wise. Uh, ben uh, Schneider. Ben Schneider. I've not seen him for ages. I hope he's doing good. Mark Lowerman is saying, where were you when the quake hit at one over in the northwest about 20 years ago? Uh, I was just sitting on my desk, you know, doing some work and uh, yeah, it wasn't bad though. It was all right. I honestly didn't think it was too much. I know some people were kind of surprised because maybe, I don't know, they felt like it was too much. But I don't know, I thought it was... Eh. Another natural disaster in New York. <laughs> I was like, what else is new? We get everything. Why not? You know, why not a why not an earthquake as well? It's like, eh. Ooh, Van Lewin, Van Lewin, man, they got really uh, they got vegan ice cream for those of you who are vegan. I know sometimes you guys say like, oh, everything that you, everything that you show is uh, for non-vegetarians, for carnivores, nothing for vegetarians. So there you go. Killing, killing two birds with one stone. So 
So yeah, you can get some vegan ice cream at uh, Van Lund. It's good stuff. Oh, we did show this one before. What else could I show you here? Looks is everywhere these days. Looks is like, it is everywhere. All right, I'm gonna take some napkins here. Yeah, so you guys remember where the, where the clock was upstairs? This one is sitting directly beneath that information booth. So the employees can actually go through here, go to the store and go up. Only the employees though, don't try to get in. And then over here we have uh, Tarin Tilly. I can never pronounce his name correctly. Anybody from France? Cyan, Aisha? Tarin Multiple locations in the city. They have baked goods, coffee, snacks, sandwiches. All that good stuff. Croissant with some cheese, with some ham. Stuff. What else? Yes, so the baked goods are actually right there. Everything. Oh, Almond croissants. Ooh, 5.75. Okay, not too bad. They got the raisin Danish. And au chocolat. They got some cookies as well. All right. What else could we see here? Shake Shack, I've already shown that one. Is that Cher? <laughs> the musician? Oh, Cher's probably... Cher's probably sitting inside one of our mansions. Apparently she's dealing with some type of health issue where she can't really touch a lot of things and a lot of people, right? I don't know, I heard something like that. Because apparently somebody was trying to hug her at an award or event or something like that and uh, she like sort of pushed that person away. Right and people thought, people thought that she was being rude without actually doing their homework. health issues. Be nice to everybody, people. You never know what people are dealing with. They might look okay on the surface. They might look fine. But you never know what's going on underneath. They might just be going through hell. A hell that you will never ever understand or know of. Know about. Anyway, that's my favorite, my favorite swatch right there. I've been eyeing this for a couple of years now, man. Oh, I love this one. You guys remember when I, when I first showed this watch a couple of years ago at a swatch store? The lady thought I was gonna do something crazy and she took out her phone and started recording me. She thought I was just gonna pick it up and run or something, I don't know. She thought I had bad intentions and she took out her phone and started recording me. You guys remember that one? National Monuments of the USA, written by Cameron Walker, illustrated by Chris Turnham. Ding. This is actually an Australian bakery. I think I've mentioned it to you before. This is an Australian bakery. Burke Street Bakery. But who knows? They might not even have a location in Australia. It might just be, might just be a cap. 
might just be a cap. Uh, Judith Hinton, that was, uh, I, would, I wanna say two years ago, at least, at least two years ago in my time, everything is blending it all, blending into one, but. Yeah, as soon as I walked in, she like took out her phone. She was with her co-worker. The co-worker, you know, didn't say anything, but her specifically, she like took out her phone. Uh, Joe Hernandez. Joe Hernandez remembers that one. Yes. Joe Hernandez is saying, yes, I remember that was strange. Very strange. Super, super strange. And she like started mocking me, like, you know, repeating what I was saying. Remember that one? You guys have no idea how much of a restraint it takes to deal with people sometimes and not to react, you know, in kind. Diane Huff, how's it going? Greetings, Rob. Uh, hope uh, you have a great day. Glad to see you again. You're on the course. Stay safe and tremendous tour. Thank you so much, Diane. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to work on my health, you know, work on other things at the same time as well. I'm trying. I hope you're doing good. I hope you're doing okay. I hope you're healthy. Good well-being and enjoying life. Steve Gonzalez is here. Greetings, Steve. Steve Gonzalez is here. Stephen Barrier is here today. A lot of Steves and Stevens. What about Three Amigos? Where is Three Amigos from Missouri? I haven't seen you in ages. I've also not seen Sharice in some time. Patricia, Patricia Radford. I hope everybody's doing good, man. I hope everybody. I know. I know life is just. Life is crazy and hectic and, you know, unexpected at times, but I hope everybody is doing okay. Staying healthy. I see Teddy. I see Teddy. Teddy, how are you doing? Nice seeing you. I see Tux Brown as well. So, Willie Ford, where in Nestle office did you work? In uh, Roslyn? Did you work in Roslyn? Virginia? I know they have a headquarters there. Where did you work? Increased mothers. Yeah, I mean, you do your best to ignore them, but if, if it comes like in your face, you know, I mean, it's like it's kind of difficult to ignore it, right? That kind of stupidity, like you can ignore it if it's like from a distance. But if it's like coming to your face, in your space, then it's like... It's kind of difficult to ignore, you know? I mean, and at the same time, you have to be professional, right? You have a lot of kids watching my channel. You have a lot of teenagers watching my channel. You don't want to set a bad example. You know, a lot of families, a lot of families and children, you know, watch my channel. So I have to be careful about what I say, how I interact with people, you know. And if people are being a-holes, I have to be like as professional as possible. You know, you know responding in kind. Hawk is saying, I love watching your New York walks, uh, but could never visit Oakville well soon. Thank you so much, Hawk. You're very thoughtful. Thank you very much, Hawk. Very kind and thoughtful. Thank you. All right, one of the best observation towers in the city is inside this building here, as you already know. And they also have a 
a really nice restaurant here. Very nice, fancy schmancy, high-end restaurant. Not one of those average restaurants that you see in New York. You know. How you doing? It's pretty nice. At least from what I've seen online. Yeah, so increase mothers. Yeah, so you know, like you can ignore these, you know, certain things. If I'm not recording, you know, if I'm just walking, minding my own business, you know, I'd be like, eh. But these people just go out of your, out of their way to instigate something. And usually, you know, they're they're waiting for a reaction, right, so that they can record and put it on their you know, social media. Say like, oh, look at this guy, you know, this type of guy, you know, did this, said this, and reacted this way, and then they're gonna cut cut it and edit it into their own, um, you know, perspective and narrative and share it with the world, right? And make you look like you are the bad guy. You have to be really careful. One of these days I'm going to start counting and, you know, put a, put like a counter on how many, how many Grand Central Terminal entrances there are. Right there, there's another one right across the street. Greetings, a ray of sunshine. How are you doing? Well, unfortunately, you came right after the sun departed. Sunset. <laughs> Back to Madison Avenue. Yeah, they try to make you look bad, you know? That's 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 their whole intention. And you see me, you know, whenever it doesn't matter who I, I interact with, I you know I treat everybody with respect, with the utmost respect, it doesn't matter who the person is. I treat them with you know professionalism. It doesn't matter who the person is, you know. Yeah. Sometimes you just don't want to touch your butt. But I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm good at, you know, controlling myself to the most part, so, you know, I, I can't complain. It's with somebody else, I'm sure. They would have knocked them down, you know, they would have stomped on their faces and whatever. But I want to go back because I want to show you something beautiful right there. Greg Spouse saying, check email when you get home. Definitely. I also sent an email to uh, Hudson's World. I sent a few emails. Have you had a chance to check it, Hudson's World? Hello, mate is here as well. Greetings. Ray Cali, how's it going? From Venezuela. Wow. Where in Venezuela? Caracas? Adriana saying, is she so paranoid? She's working at the wrong place. Possibly, yeah. Like, you know, some people also, you know, take out their angers and frustrations on you. Sometimes, you know, there's, they, they don't really have, you know, interactions that excites their days. So they choose you as an experiment to take out their angers and frustrations when they when that. that happens too. Increase uh, mothers, yes, you remember that one, right? Yeah, that was that wasn't even yeah. So with that one, I went back and told them a piece of my mind. Emma is saying I got no notification today. Oh. Ah, uh, YouTube. So we have friends. Uh, yeah, let's do this then. Let's uh, let's go ahead and like this video. It looks like we have 363 people watching right now. So if you could go ahead and uh, like and share this video, I would greatly appreciate it. Just take a moment, take a second. It only takes a second. That would mean a lot to me. If you enjoyed the walk thus far.
take a moment to go ahead and like this video. If you're watching on a TV, on an iPad, whatever it is, just jump on your phone and give this video a like. And if you could share, that would even be better. That would be phenomenal. Sinks, are you watching? Yeah, it seems like a lot of people are not getting my uh, notifications these days. I haven't actually uploaded anything in the last four or five days, so that could be that could have affected the algorithm. I don't know to an extent. least to you guys because you guys you know are tuning in almost every time so you should be getting the notifications you should not be excluded from notifications I covered today I have no idea to be honest but uh, sometimes you know I go I go on one of the health apps and I see like how many steps I've walked and stuff that's about it I don't even keep track to be honest I normally don't but I know I know I walk a lot definitely yeah I don't mind walking to be honest with you I could do like I could walk for days. Especially in New York, you know, it's a lot of fun. You get to see a lot of new things. You get to interact with a lot of people. Just, it's a lot of fun. Talking, talking for a couple of hours. That's, uh, that, that's tough. That's very tough. That I would say is very tough. Thank you so much, Captain. I appreciate that. Always. Hey, once my health uh, goes back to normal someday, we're going to be walking at least three, four hours a day, and you know, sometimes possibly twice a day. Why not? Why not, right? For instance, you know, I got like some neck problems, I got the TMJ, I got my back problem, back pain, everything just came all in. Marie, 
Uh, where are you watching from? I forgot. I forgot where you're watching from. I, I want to say somewhere in Europe. Ah, uh, Judith, yes, I, I'm probably gonna live with TMJ for a long time, and uh, there's like a now I, I there's like a lump on my jaw. I'm like so stressed out about it. I, I didn't even notice it until maybe two days ago. I was just like massaging my jaw, and I felt a lump, like a big lump. So I'm gonna have to get that checked at some point as well. Yeah, it's something that I'm going to be living with uh, for some time, it looks like. Unless I do a surgery. My whole jaw is like... Not in the right place. It's off. Thank you, my friend Jim. Thank you so much, Jim Barris. You guys are very nice. I appreciate that. I appreciate the thoughts and prayers. Thank you so much, friends. You guys are awesome. Ah, <laughs> hello mate, yeah, possibly, who knows, who knows, I might have to, I might have to use an AI next time, next time I'm streaming, right Greg, Greg Spell? favorite favorite cities in North America Montreal really nice people lots to see yeah. it used to be like you know cheap flights from New York for like 80 bucks to Montreal and the hotel prices used to be good not so much anymore Montreal is, uh, is very fantastic Quebecois people very very fantastic so much Tamitha. Uh, same with Ladang as well. Judith Hinton, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, it just sounds like, you know, and these doctors, you know, they don't do like, you know, uh, thorough checks. They just do like the random, you know, quick check so that they can get you in and out and they don't see everything thoroughly, right? It's like Starbucks, they want to get you in and out. And I'm pretty sure he must have missed a lump. I sent him an email about it, no response. So I don't know. But yeah, that's a big lump on my jaw. Well, Greg Spau, Adriana Rodriguez, it looks like your favorite uh, park in the city or midtown in this part of town is open and lively. The lawn is still not open to the public yet. But as you can see, it is super, super good. Uh, Joe Hernandez is saying those EMS workers must hear those sirens in their sleep, right? Especially, you know, people who live in Midtown as well, you know, in these apartment buildings. Unless they have those soundproof uh, window glasses, they're probably going to hear them in their dreams. looks a lot better right but I want to I walk this way because I want to show you some beautiful flowers Greg is saying yes this is an AI Rob <laughs> floating around New York <laughs> exactly they probably have a, a Rob you know walk right fly in China who knows those guys are good at uh, duplicating things what is this real is this real no it's not okay I thought it was real for a second this restaurant Bryant Park. Has anybody had a chance to eat here? I don't know what it's like. Jackie, Jackie from uh, Atlanta, Georgia. I'm sure you're gonna like these ones. Adriana saying those purple and yellow flowers. So Somebody forgot something here. 
oh, somebody bought an art and forgot about it. Huh. And it's signed and everything as well. Oh, it looks like somebody went to like a Broadway show. Yeah, and got everything signed, but forgot about it. Oh my goodness, this must be some valuable stuff. Interesting. Look at that. They got people, they got like five, six signatures on it and everything. Interesting. Oh, man. I hope the person comes back, man. Oh my goodness. I'm assuming the person is like a Broadway fanatic, Broadway aficionado, came all the way to New York, went to the show, got some of the crew or the cast, you know, to sign this poster. I forgot it here. Ah, oh, I'll just leave it where it is. I hope they come back. I hope they come back to pick it up and then nobody else takes it. Yeah, the, the, the thing is like I notice, you know, a lot of tourists get super, super excited in New York and uh, get overwhelmed, you know, with the, with the, um, all the sensation and all the, you know, just all the activities and everything that's going on in front of them. Sometimes, you know, they forget a lot of things or a few things, a few important things. Anyway, Adriana, there you go. So unlucky, right? I hope the person comes back. I hope they haven't left. I hope they come back, you know, from their hotel, Airbnb, and realize that they they forgot it. Yeah, I remember the the phone, the iPhone uh, 14 that I found. When I went back to the place, you know, to make sure that they give it to the person, they said it was a 14-year-old kid, a tourist visiting the city with his parents. So it's pretty common pretty common you know I mean it's just that there's so much going on in New York City especially if you're if you're a young kid you know it's like you can't keep up with everything and you might you might you might just forget you know the basic things and uh, leave items behind so unfortunate though Cynthia Kalman, how are you doing? You should keep it for the person. It could get ruined if it rains. I mean, it's covered in plastic. And the one thing that I'm worried about is if the person comes back, you know, to check at that location, and if they don't find it, how would I be able to find them? How would, how would they be able to find me? It was a phone like the one I found the other day, or the one, you know, I found at the, uh, or at the Union Square. I'd be able to at least wait until the person calls or you know go to an establishment you know nearby and say like hey could you give the person this but this one it looks like they probably just you know had lunch here somewhere maybe had a snack you know sat down for a little bit God. Catherine what do you guys suggest I do should I leave it there or should I take it with me but if I take it how would I be able to find the person I can't find the person. Sally Sofia, how's it going? I've not seen uh, Stephanie Stearns or uh, Maria Schultz in ages. I hope they're doing good. Yeah, if I take it with me, I, I would not have a way to contact the person. I don't know who left it. If it's a phone, I mean, we could have dropped it at. You know, Apple dropped it at you know whatever was right next to it like last time yeah I'm, what am I gonna do with it you know it's like it's not mine I don't know who owns it I'll just let's just hope that they come back and you know look for it and oh you know what maybe we'll give it to him So somebody left a poster with uh, like autograph and everything. Would it be okay to leave it with you? Or is that like a Broadway poster? Autograph and everything. Huh? Oh, it's over there. Yeah. Can I bring it to you? Is that okay? Just leave it there. It looks like a. Uh, 
<laughs> just wanted to like all right thank you all right hey roxanne how are you doing yeah greg yeah i did ask the security guy to thank you How you doing? Having a good time? Awesome. Thank you. Um, so yeah, usually they, they really don't care. Remember I told you guys, you know, I found a wallet, you know, with uh, credit cards, money and everything. The lower Manhattan. I went to the police station. I said, hey, you found this. And they're like, uh, you could just, you know, you could just throw it in a pile. And if they ask, you know, they'll get it. If not, it'll just be here. I usually don't care. Oh no, the security guard, he said, just leave it there. He just said, leave it there. Then. Yeah, I told him, like, can I bring it to you? He's like, nope. <laughs> He's like, nope. He's like, no, don't take it. Don't leave it with me. Just leave it where it is. Yeah, I had to like, you know, reach out to the person via email and via, you know, and the person, you know, is like, you know, the, the wallet that I found, you know, about a year and a half ago. The person is from Mexico. The person had a Mexican driver's license, kind of like an EMT from Mexico, like a lot of information in that wallet. And I even reached out to the Mexican, you know, consulate in New York. They never responded. So I had to like find the person on social media. go through so many hoops to find that person to find you know to, to be like hey i have your id i have your money i have everything here in this wallet it took a lot of work my friend so yeah usually cops don't care about these things man they, they got security guards are not worried about that kind of stuff yeah they are worried about some you know crazy person punching an old lady or a young girl you know there's a lot of things that they're worried about Yeah, but that wallet, you know, the person is in Mexico. The person is from Mexico. I wasn't sure the person was still in town, left the country, or actually lives in the U.S. and still has a Mexican address, you know. I, I, it could be anything. It could be anything. All right, so let's go right across the street because I want to show you this Le Pain Quotidien. I've always told you about this one. This one is my favorite, favorite. Well, not absolute favorite. It would be like number two. Number two on the Le Pain Quotidien list. The first one is the one in Lower Manhattan. Here they have lots of options, lots of, uh, I mean, plenty of space to sit down and eat and, you know, do some work. And also, they don't run out of baked goods as quickly. They, they, uh, they stuck up pretty good. Uh, Judith in Tennis saying UN just wrapped uh, up uh, their session. Ah, just right now, huh? Uh, they started at four, I believe. I think they started at four. Wow, that's a long meeting. Four to seven, huh? Four to seven thirty. Man, people in New York are just fashionistas, huh? They dress pretty well. Uh, Catherine is saying, uh, was it signed? Was, uh, what was the show? Uh, Kimberly something. Kimber something. That's one of the Broadway shows. Yes. Uh, no worries at all, Joe. Anybody from Serbia? Anybody? This is a Nikola Tesla form. Yeah, 
Jack Gottman. Yes, security guard doesn't care. He's like, he, he kind of like, he kind of, kind of looks surprised that I even said that to him. He's like, what? I'm like, you want me to keep an item? What? What? You want me to keep an item of somebody who left an item here? He was kind of like puzzled. He's like, no, don't bring it to me. <laughs> he was like, what? He kind of looked at me like, is this guy for real? Go down this way. Let's see if we can find something interesting. Romania, yes, Romania, another beautiful, beautiful country. Romania is beautiful, and I know, I know you guys love coffee too. You guys just are so good with coffee shops, man. I've, I've like wondered, I've ventured around Romania virtually on Google, and I've seen some of your coffee shops, man. You guys take coffee very seriously. I appreciate you for that. And Chris Mothers is saying, Rob, you're not in Cali anymore. Yeah, and then there was another time, you know, when I found a phone near the Javits Center and I went back, you know, to uh, the C like I went to a CVS nearby, you know, the person was calling. So I said, hey, you know, I'm going to leave it at a CVS nearby. I told them the location. You can go there and pick it up. I'm not gonna be able to wait for you here. So I found it, you know, um, inside a train station, inside a subway station. So I went in and, you know, dropped it at a CVS and the manager is like, you're returning a phone that somebody left? You must be, she could, I swear to God, she goes, you must not be from New York. I said, yeah, I'm not from New York. What does that mean? She goes, oh, okay. I'm like, yeah, I'm from California. <laughs> she goes, you must not be from New York. not mine. It doesn't belong to me. Why would I keep it? I have a phone. How many phones do I need? Just like Dubai, Qatar, Abu Dhabi, Saudi, Singapore, you could leave like in a whole bank account, you could leave like a whole, you know, gold bar if you want to do. Nobody's going to touch it. Nobody will touch it. Joe is saying, I lost my mind several years ago. I'm waiting for someone to return it. <laughs> That's funny. Where did you lose your mind, my friend? Staten Island? Anjani. Uh, Anjani, yes, I've heard of uh, Old Bon Pain. Absolutely. Yes, I have. It's kind of like Maison Kaiser. Very similar to that one. Indeed. But yeah. Anyway, friends, uh, I think I'm going to I'm going to end the stream here pretty soon. But in the meantime, I want to say thank you to everybody. Thank you for being here. I want to say thank you to uh, the mods. A special thanks to Judith Hinton and Joe Hernandez. Thank you, thank you, thank you to both. Thank you so much. I also want to say thank you to everybody who joined in. And uh, thank you to those who supported the channel today with uh, Super Chats. Thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for being here. Hi, Roxanne, how you doing? 
thank you for being here. Uh, Greg Spau, Cynthia Kalman, Mar Jav, Valerie Wood, OT Sinks. Man, today I'm like exhausted, mentally exhausted. Increased mothers, uh, Tamitha, Abix Girl, Omnia, Marie Eve from Montreal, Ray of Sunshine, hello May 2008, Tamitha. Uh, who else? Thank you so much, uh, Roxanne Robles. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you, friends. Uh, Joseph Hardaway, thank you as well. Corvette Girl, Hawk, thank you. Thank you so much for being here and for your support. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Teddy D, Tux Brown, Willie Ford, Eloy. Maria, Cyan, Mukareji, Robin Lyles, thank you for joining in, Nancy Ashby from Baltimore, Maryland, Ladang from Australia, Sydney, Australia, hey, how you doing? Are we on live? Yeah, yeah. Uh, YouTube. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Have a good one. Catherine McKay from Canada, Nova Scotia, Azeem from, from Egypt. Shukran Habibi. OT Sinks, my man from England, from the UK. Thank you for joining in, everybody. Thank you to all of you. Keep me in your thoughts and prayers. I'll do the same for you as well. Thank you, thank you to everybody. Thank you, Adriana Rodriguez. Adriana Rodriguez, if I don't see you again, have a safe trip. To Rome, enjoy it for all of us. Eat well, sleep well, enjoy. Oh, Gary Ting, you are absolutely late to the party today. You are very late. Uh, right now, 326. It's ending though, so it was higher, but now it's ending. How many followers do you have? Uh, 76,000. What are you videoing for? 76,000? YouTube, yeah. Whoa, what's your name? Whoa. Walk, ride, fly. Where are you guys visiting from? Uh, Boston. Nice. Boston. Sun Sunshine yeah. State. Boston. <laughs> exactly, yeah, Sunshine. Lots of people behind me, I don't find Sorry, what's your name again? Walk, ride, fly. Hey, yep, there you go. Cool. Hey. You're alive right here. It's all the ways of transport. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Oh! No! Hey, yeah. Boston in the house. <laughs> Boston in New York. Boston. It's so delayed. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I was just about to end the stream, so. Subscribe. Subscribe. That's right. Subscribe. I got TikTok too. Right, so I got TikTok. I just started TikTok, so check it out. Have a good one. TikTok too. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good kids. All right, friends. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm uh, I'm gonna compile the list of names of people who uh, supported the channel via. PayPal and Cash App uh, the last few days, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring the list. I forgot to bring the list with me, so I'm gonna do that and uh, try to uh, say thank you to those uh, who are supporting via PayPal and Cash App and the GoFundMe. Thank you, thank you to all of you. You guys are appreciated. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, thank you. You're awesome. I see you. I see you, uh, Cynthia. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Take care. R L from Mexico. Nice. Have a good one, Cynthia Ferrans. Yeah. Take care, everybody.